Fine. How are you all? It's nice to have you with us. Look forward to uh, having you have a good time while we uh, make some glass for you this morning. All right. So what's on the agenda today, sir? So we're going to do a uh, long stem goblet. Uh, let me get one. And this is uh, this is the goblet that we're going to do. A cup, a long stem, we'll spin a foot, turn it around, open it up. We're going to be doing it in a violet color, a purple violet color, which is made from an oxide of manganese. All righty, good, let's go. All right. <laughs> So Foster's heading over to get a blowing iron right now. He's got it uh, warming up in our pipe warmer. We preheat the iron so that the glass will stick to it better. And he's going to back over there at one of the annealers. He's got a small chunk of violet glass. He's picked it up on the end of the blow pipe. Since the glass has been preheated and so has the pipe, sticks right to it. But it's kind of uh, sharp right now, okay? So it's not melted in. And that's why he's taking it into the glory hole. The glory hole is a, basically a reheating oven. There's no glass in that, except for what's on the end of Foster's blowing iron. So it's a ceramic tube, basically. It heats to about 2300 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's used to melt the glass or soften it up again. The glass that comes out of our furnace is about 2000 degrees and it is actually already melted and quite liquid. So every once in a while we got to reheat the glass, put it in there, melt it, and get it malleable again. And that's what he's doing right now with that small chunk of violet. So after he gets done doing that, he'll bring it over to the metal table and shape it up. All right. And so here we go. All righty. So the metal table is called a marver, and he the glass on that. You can see it brings it to a little bit of a point. He'll tap the end just to chill it a little bit. Give it a nice uniform shape and now he's going to trap some air into the blowing iron with his finger over the opening. The air has nowhere to go but out into that hot glass. That'll bulge just a little bit. You may be able to detect it. And now he's simply chilling it and shaping it a little bit more from the bulge. We judge the heat by the color of the iron, also the color of the glass. So when Foster comes back from this next gather of clear glass, what you'll see is a bright orange glow from the glass. The clear glass that he picks up will heat that little piece of violet. It'll also be heating the blowing iron. So everything's going to be glowing when he comes back. And that brightness is a pretty good sign of heat. The glass is, looks almost incandescent. You can see where the color is right in the middle of that. I was going to use a cherry wood block. It's, a, it's basically a cup on a handle. And it's used to shape the glass. Gives it nice symmetry. And also, it stabilizes the outside just a little bit. Puts a little skin on it. Once again, he's going to blow, trap the air with his finger and we'll watch it expand. And there it goes, it's starting to grow. We want to do this slowly and under control. Now he'll use the block again to chill it just a little bit. Very important to let the glass cool some before the next gather. If he gathers too soon and the glass is still very, very hot, it'll collapse. Now if you look at that, you can see the color is a lot darker in the uh, of gather there and that's because it's cooling off so as the glass heats it gets brighter there's more energy involved and he's right now going to take another gather of clear glass the furnace he's gathering from holds about 450 pounds of molten glass and as we said earlier it's held at 2,000 degrees and that's what we work with it's very uh, the viscosity is such that he could actually let it drizzle right off of the iron. He doesn't need a tremendous amount of glass because with this portion of the violet, he's just making the cup of the goblet. So once again, with a slightly larger cherry wood block, and 
It puts the skin on it, stabilizes it, and shapes really quickly. And now, it's getting into the optic mold, blowing hard. The air trapped in there expands against those ridges, and now you can see them in the glass. So the optic mold, or dip mold, that we have down here is used for decorative purposes. Uh, you just dip the glass in it, and you get an optical effect. It does not form the final shape of the vessel. That's up to the artist. So here he goes now with a pair of metal blades. They're called jacks. He's making constriction in the glass near the blowing iron. He'll have to break it away from there eventually. Another pressurized air blast, and there goes the expansion into the bubble. So you can see it grow larger. So we use the jacks to make a constriction close to the blowing iron, and then later on, that's where we will intentionally break the glass free from the blowpipe. That won't come till much later in the process after we've completed, mostly completed the cup and added the stem and the foot. Once again, to refine the jack line or neck line of the pleat piece. Good morning, Bridget. Welcome aboard. Anybody else out there, make yourself known. He uses the newspaper there to chill the bottom of the glass so it doesn't expand too much when he blows. Also, by holding the iron up horizontal and turning as he blows, he gets more of a spherical shape. If he were to point it down, it would be elongated. If he were to point it up in the air, it would fall back toward itself and flatten out a little bit. He's got a pair of calipers. He can check the size so that he can make mating pairs. And now he's using a special tool that uh, Foster and only a few other artists around the country use, and those are the cardboard or paper pegs. They don't steal as much heat from the glass and they help shape it. He's handed it off to Josh now, who's going to go over and do what we call a flash heat. Flash heating is just uh, a momentary introduction of heat. You see Josh put that in there for a few seconds. He's got his eye on Foster to see what's going on. He wants to make sure that he doesn't get the glass too hot, it would change shape, or let it get too cold, it would fracture. By keeping an eye on Foster, he knows when Foster's heading back to the bench. So Josh is timing his heats in relation to what Foster does. Foster's completed his gathers for the stem. He's headed back to the bench. And both of them now will go over that way. Josh will invert the iron, holding the piece toward the ceiling. And that's the bottom of the cup that's up there at the top. So when Foster drops this gather of glass onto it, it'll be the stem to be created. He lays it in place, snips it off, and then he'll have a seat and Josh will present it to it. Foster's going to begin by tapering it, using the jacks, both the uh, strap and the, the blades. Now he's going to cut a little indentation into it, and now he's going to start to pull out a bit of the stem. But before he gets that completed and before it goes to full length, Josh is going to bring over to him what we call a moil wrap. The moil is the remainder of glass that lies on the iron, stays there after the piece is gone. If it gets cold, the cracks can run down into the piece. So by wrapping fresh glass around that, we ensure that that area won't get cold during this extended process and the crack won't run down into the cup. So right now, that stem is about half the length that he wants. When he gets this fully extended, and we're working on the cup at, uh, later on, and we're putting on a foot and all the other things, we don't have the whole piece in the glory hole all the time. And uh, that's one of the reasons we try to prevent that cracking with that boil wrap. All right, so now he'll come back, and he'll begin to pull outward. If you can imagine a tennis backhand, it's almost like Foster is pulling the glass out away from the blowing iron. 
is kept that little ball on the end of the stem. That's where the foot will go. And by taking that out like that, he's managed to keep this straight. He's checking his sizes. And now he's going to use the paper pegs to set the stem. They chill it marginally, let's say, and not as much as the metal jacks would. It's nicely under control, perfectly straight, and he'll hand off to Josh again. Now Josh has got a longer piece of glass, but he's still got a flash in. We can't let the cup or the stem get too cold from this point forward. Josh keeps an eye on what's going on down at the other end. Gives the appropriate amount of heat, just a few seconds in the glory hole, and he'll probably do it one more time as Foster makes his way back to the bench. He's watching Foster. There he goes for another flash, and now he'll head over and again, invert the iron, point the piece upward toward the ceiling. You can see where the stem is, and on the end of the stem is that little ball, and that's where Foster will have the glass land. Lands right on the top and snips it off. Now, he's going to use a pair of boards that are hinged together and squeeze the glass. It's kind of thick right now if you look. But watch what happens as he squeezes the boards together. It thins the glass out, gives it a nice edge for the shape of the foot. And the foot diameter is just perfect. Now that board, those boards are held in water all the time, so they don't crack. You saw some smoking there as they burned in a little bit. But we can get about 150 feet made out of a pair of boards before they have to be adjusted. Now he's got a really cool little tool he'll use. It's a carbide paddle, and he can use it to flatten the bottom but he can also put a nice taper on the upper part of the foot. See how the curvature of that carbide just brings it down into a beautiful slope. He'll flatten the edge once again, and then as soon as he's ready, he'll hand off to Josh for what we call the transfer. The transfer is simply taking the piece off of the blowing iron and onto the punty iron. Foster's preparing the punty now, which is just a small bit of glass on the end. Josh will be giving it the last flash as Foster walks by, and Josh will take it to the bench. We make the lower half to two-thirds of a vessel on the blowing iron, and then we transfer it to a punty to finish it up. Good morning, Joanna. Welcome aboard. Now we're going to have what's called the transfer. Foster's going to guide the punty iron onto the center of the foot. And then once he gets it placed, he's going to turn everything. He's turning both irons. Once he gets that center, he's going to score the neck and tap the iron and the piece comes off. Hey, Tommy, welcome aboard. Glad to have you from the UK. We've got a couple of folks from the UK here this morning. So, now that glass was cold enough to fracture, it's going to take just a few moments extra to heat up the lip area of the vessel to get it to open up. So Foster will concentrate the heat on the upper part, the lip of the vessel, but every once in a while you're going to see him take that whole goblet and insert it into the glory hole. That's the flash heat to keep it from cracking. So he's watching the glass, keeping an eye on it, and in just a few moments, he'll come back to the bench and he'll begin the process of opening the cup. Oh, wow, we got uh, Steve Ellis from Yorkshire. We got, uh, we got three of you from the UK. We got Joanna, we got Tommy, we got Steve. Very good. Lends an international flavor to the art of fire. All right, so he's going to open that up just a little bit with the jacks. And then he's going to take a pair of straight shears, or actually duck-billed shears, and trim the glass. So when the glass is hot, it's easily cut, just like that. And make sure that he's got that rounded a little bit, and then he'll go back for more heat. So most often, oh, Steve lives about five miles from Tommy. Very good. Is Steve a woodworker also? 
All right, so Foster took the piece fully in for the flat. She's got all of it in there just to make sure that foot and stem don't get cold and cracked. And then he's going to concentrate the heat in the bowl of the goblin. After he gets that done, he'll come back to the bench to open the bowl up. All right, so he's back to the bench now. He uses the strap of the jacks to fill the end of it a little bit, and now a steam cone. So for those woodworkers that may be watching, this is a uh, solid wood cone. It's shaped when the wood is green, and it's always kept in water. This is going to keep it from cracking over time. We don't have to replace them too often. So what we do with the cherry wood tools, and really any fruit wood would work because of the dense grain, after they've been soaked in water, when they're introduced to a hot environment, especially a closed one. No, Bridget, not a private show. How about that? Okay, so when, the, when it's introduced into the hot environment, which is what the cup of the goblet is, then the steam is created and blows it up. So what the steam cone allows us to do is actually kind of blow the glass when we're not on a blowing iron. Here we go. Cone goes in, the inflation takes place, it starts to open up, and then he'll use his jacks to open the vessel. And you'll notice we have perhaps about a minute or so of working time when we come back to the bench. That's because the glass cools off quickly and back in for another flash. Notice he spends plenty of time on those flashes. He's got his eye on the glass. He's trying to detect uh, any motion. If he starts to see the stem or the foot moving around, he would know that he heated too long. Of course, after 40 years experience, he doesn't do that. But uh, he's got the heat in the upper reaches of the cup. You can see the bright color there. That's indicative of the heat. and he begins shaping the bowl of the goblin. Okay. Forty-five p.m. Steve tells us and he's made the adjustment for us Yanks because he didn't say 1545 thank you Steve there's the final touches and then a quick check with his calipers just to make sure of what his height is and if it's, it'll adjust those so that he can make a mate to this later on. Once he gets the height set. There we go. That's it. Beautiful job. Okay, so it'll be another quick flash here, sometimes even two. And then he's going to take the goblet off of the punty iron. So what he'll do is use a butter knife to chip around the joint between the punty and the foot. This will cool it. This will cause a weak spot for it to break. Once he taps the iron, it should come free without a lot of effort. Just like that. To put on an insulated glove, that's still, that glass is still over 1100 degrees Fahrenheit. And off to the annealer he goes. So. This is the longest process of glass blowing, is the annealing. Uh, the glass will sit in that annealer all day and be held at about 900 degrees Fahrenheit. At the end of the day, it will shut off, but the glass will come very slowly down to room temperature over the course of eight hours. Thank you, Foster, that's beautiful. Uh, thank you, nice to have you with us this morning, and uh, we hope you enjoyed the uh, making of the long stem goblet. 
with the Violet Cup, and we'll look forward to seeing you again real soon. Okay, thank, thank you. you. And before we go, uh, Steve, I'm, I'm sorry if you've been here before and I just failed to remember you, but with our, our UK contingent in here, I'd like to invite you guys to join us in about, uh, oh, in about 10 minutes at 11 a.m. Eastern time in the U.S. We'll be doing about a two hour presentation of uh, more glass blowing. So that'll be on Facebook Live. Go to our YouTube, our live, our Facebook channel, uh, Art of Fire Contemporary Glass Blowing Studio. So have a great day. Bye bye.